Good evening. I'll now call the City of Cannon Falls City Council meeting for Tuesday, December the 5th to order. Roll call, please. Councilmember Abadie? Present. Altoff? Here. Carpenter? Here. Dalton? Here. Matson? Here. McCusker? Yeah. And Mayor Robinson? Here. All please for the stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to winter and the first city council meeting of winter, I guess you can call it. This time, the chair will take a motion to approve the agenda as submitted. So moved. No second. Motion by Ken, second by Morris. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's approved. That moves us on to item five this evening, which is public input. Citizens may speak to issues not on the agenda. Before speaking, please give your name and address for the minutes and please limit your comments to three minutes. Is anybody wishing to speak on anything not on the agenda this evening? Uh, Chris Albrecht, I live at 6670 Bluff Drive. I did have a quick question regarding the SEMCRA, which is on the agenda. We have an alternative proposal. Is now the time to put that forward, or during the discussion on the SEMCRA and the Sandstone Ridge edition, is it then that I would bring up what I've got for you folks? I would do it during uh, the SEMCRA. Thank you. Yep. That is a public hearing. Yep. Right. Yep. Yep. Anybody else wishing to address the Council on anything not on the agenda. If not, that moves us on to five, uh, item six this evening, which is resolution 2311, authorizing Simtra to move forward uh, the redevelopment plan for Sandstone Ridge development. And we will be having a public hearing uh, on this. Ron. Okay, thank you. Uh, this goes back quite a ways, obviously. It uh, goes back to the 2002 2004 development primarily a failed housing development back at that time, uh, about plus or minus 35 to 40 acres off of Highway 25. The Most of the property is owned by the state of Minnesota. Goodyear County is the custodian of it by statute. Earlier this year, uh, Southeast Minnesota Multi-County HRA, or Housing Redevelopment Authority, submitted a development plan for council consideration. There was a... Uh, ad hoc committee of uh, Mayor Robinson, Council Members Abadie and Dalton that looked at the initial proposal, recommended approval. Council ultimately approved the resolution for the HRA to move forward with the project. However, then Mr. Wheeler, who is the, uh, Joe Wheeler is the executive director of the HRA, contacted me and said that his uh, legal folks told him that they would need a public, we needed to do a public hearing for this uh, particular process for their financing, and I guess he can explain that if, if need be, but. So that's, uh, council did set a public hearing for that for October 3rd, but after council set that public hearing, there was, we found, we found that there was quite a bit of, at least a little bit of interest in the residential lots, primarily on the west end of the Sandstone Ridge development. And um, therefore, thereafter, uh, council set another hearing date and the HRA has since submitted a revised development plan that's in your packet. Joe Wheeler is here, uh, the executive director of the Southeast Minnesota Multi-County HRA, and he will be presenting the information tonight, but it is a public hearing, so. Okay. Know how you want to handle so we will, what we will do is open the public hearing, let Mr. Wheeler uh, give his presentation, and then invite anyone else wishing to address us under the public hearing to come forward. So uh, at this time, we will open the public hearing uh, regarding Resolution 2311, which is the Simtra Sandstone Ridge Development Plan. And then uh, after uh, Mr. Wheeler's done, then we will uh, allow anybody else that wishes to speak in the public hearing to come forward to speak. Mr. Wheeler. Good 
Good evening. Uh, thanks for allowing me to uh, speak here this evening. Um, as Ron had indicated, um, uh, part of the statute for Housing Redevelopment Authority to develop a, re um, a redevelopment plan, a public hearing is required. So that's the main purpose of coming back and um, um, or contacting the city to hold the public hearing. So that's necessary in order for the council to formally approve uh, uh, approve the redevelopment plan. Um, there still is no, uh, even um, assuming that that may happen, um, what will happen then is the plan will be submitted. Uh, the, the county actually doesn't approve the plan. It's the city that approves the plan, but the county then would have to make a determination if we meet the uh, state statute to uh, acquire tax forfeited property, and that's action that would be uh, required by the county board. Um, just to kind of tell you about process, assuming that that happens, our first step would be to get the uh, property surveyed, um, get the title cleaned up, work with the city on, on any property that they currently own. We've got, um, I'm, we're not even certain if the streets have been dedicated over to the city, so uh, those types of things would have to be worked out uh, prior to um, um, moving anything forward. At the same time, what we would be doing is soliciting proposals from um, uh, for-profit and non-profit developers to come in, and our main focus is, um, and that's the big change within the plan. I, I won't go into a lot of detail. You've got history here. So a report that was done a couple years ago uh, by Stantec Engineering Firm kind of outlined some of the issues with the property and then put a um, estimate together and they broke it into two parts, the east and the west end. Uh, those are things that we obviously need to pay attention to because the soil correction is huge as well as uh, we're still uncertain as to what actually would occur, um, would have to occur if the existing streets were being used and what that cost would be and, and so on. So as part of our process, we've set aside money uh, to investigate at least the uh, sewer and water um, mains within the east end and to kind of take a look at that and then make a determination of how much that, of that can be used and what can't be used. But we're really focusing, the plan now really focuses only on the east end. Um, we're looking at developing uh, 36 uh, townhomes um, and or rental units on that side. The target group for that would be workforce housing, what we refer to primarily families at 80% of the county median and below, um, and or elderly, and elderly uh, could be 55 years of age or older, or could be a little bit based on the funding that comes in to develop that. I can tell you that basically what's going on in Washington right now kind of changes game plans moving forward, because it will, uh, based on the final outcome of that, it will affect which uh, big resources, tax credits, and if they lower the corporate tax, all those things, uh, you might see the dollars that are available through the tax credits shrink uh, substantially because there wouldn't be a huge need for corporation to invest in tax credits if they don't have any taxes to pay or as much taxes. But that's just one of many resources that we'd look at. I mean, how would, how would that affect your project, Joe? Um, pardon? How would that affect your project? Well, but most of the projects, when you're looking at workforce housing in particular, um, I'm going to say about 80% of the funding comes from tax credits. So if that goes in, and uh, it was gold uh, before the current administration got in and was paying like a dollar ten, uh, they were getting a dollar ten for every dollar that develop, or that a um, investor would invest in the property. That has since dropped since the administration came in to 85 cents on the dollar. And with the corporate tax, God only knows where it could go, but it could go. It could drop down to 50 or 45 or 35 cents on the dollar. Um, so it makes a difference. So you got to look at other resources. Too early to tell where all that's going to go. We have no idea what the state will do. Um, we're living in a great state, so the state of Minnesota uh, understands the huge need for affordable housing in the state of Minnesota, and they've been appropriating some money towards it and providing some incentives uh, for investment. In fact, uh, there's a proposal being worked on right now for a state tax credit program uh, that's basically matched dollar for dollar. So I, I can only tell you we'll be creative <laughs> once we identify a developer 
uh, that wants to work with us through the process, we'll start looking at all these different avenues and I'll be talking to the city during that, during that process to try to get it to a point of construction. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and with the deficit, I mean, with the state's projected deficit now, I mean, I don't know if you saw that today of 188 million that mm -hmm. they've got to do. I don't, I'm hoping that, you know, that they've got a way that they can do some credits, I mean, right. for you, but I mean, it's, that could play. Right. Yeah. We'll have to wait and see. That That's one source. Minnesota Housing Finance Agency has dollars available. There's Greater Minnesota Housing Fund. Uh, there's some other resources that we can start looking at as well to look at how we might structure a deal as it moves forward. It won't happen overnight, but most certainly we'll look at all the avenues uh, to, uh, to pull it together. Uh, the only other thing I want to identify is the West End is also there for information only. Uh, we uh, have no desire to go on the west end um, where a lot of the single family lots are or a lot of the single family lots at this point our focus uh, tonight is just strictly on the east end and that map that's provided in the plan doesn't necessarily say that's where the fine line will be because we'll work with the city and the county to distinguish you know what are we actually looking at and then uh, you know getting a survey here and there to get the boundaries and and all those things squared away how about how, how about the lots that have been sold of there? How is that going to affect it, your that, project? That, those are all on the west end. Okay. West end of the property. Am I, is that correct? Yes. Okay. How about the solar garden option? Is that part of That's still uh, something that we'll uh, most certainly look at as well. And it won't just necessarily be the one. We, we've actually been working with two or three different ones, and Ron said they've been, they've been working with another one, so we'll kind of open that up to see what our best bang for the buck would be for for solar option. Great. Any other questions for for Joe? Uh, well, I I got a lot of questions, but um, I don't know. I it isn't necessarily for you, but I guess I have some questions about how the city goes about this. But um, um, I guess the more we seem to get involved, the more concerns I have because we. Um, when I was on the council last time, the, the, the project up there got shot down because of the green gumbo clay. And uh, at that time, there was a big uh, thing about that. Uh, we didn't accept the property, so we didn't own any of it, but we had put in the water tower and everything else to hook up to this. Mm -hmm. um, then I listened to one word that you said there tonight that concerned me where um, if the city legally owns the streets or where that's at right now because I assume it went through a foreclosure the way it sounds to me. Mm -hmm. Now it's a matter of getting that all straight around. And I do know that we have other contractors that bought property there now and then came along and supposedly uh, it's questionable if we own the streets and the state owns the property and the county can sell it, and I don't know if we're getting any assessment paybacks to, for what we invested to hook up to this. Mm -hmm. So to me, the council should have a workshop on this thing uh, because I think there's a lot of unanswered questions, and the people that did get the permits here uh, had to come back through the city, and yet the county made the rules and sold the property and then we had to change something because it, you had to have 10 acres and it was only supposed to be one lot. So the more I listen to this, uh, the more confused I get. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to encourage you to, that we're here to work with you. But it all seems, also seems to me right now that nobody has the answer if we will actually get any assessments out of this or if we're just going to just go with it the way it is. Um, so I do, I do have a lot of questions, and I would hope that the uh, city would consider having a workshop with the council on this sometime. Thank you. Ron, is the, um, we'd, we had talked about uh, possibly looking at assessments on some of those or, or, or trying to recoup some of those. Yeah, the, the, we have the ability, and Linnell, you worked with Roger on this closer than, than I did, but uh, we have the ability on tax-forfeited parcels to 
collect the special assessment. We'd have to go through the 429, the special assessment process to do that. But there is that, that possibility. Is there is that part of the Wackensack thing or is there another assessment no. besides that? It, it'd be whatever the uh, the special assessment was for for water and sewer. I don't know specifically what they were, Leroy. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so the ones we're hooking up now, uh, we had two, three of them that we went ahead with. Are we assessing them lots then, or? There were two that were from the Cedar Hills Division of Subdivision that's not part of the sandstone. But future ones, council will have to consider whether or not to collect the special assessments that were in the tax forfeiture. So for your standpoint, um, I don't know what them assessments would be, but to me it's something the city should discuss. So um, just so you know, it sounds to me like there will be an assessment on these lots too. So um, if that's something that needs to be a part of your figures, uh, probably should discuss that more with Ron. So Joe, all you're looking for tonight is <coughs> Th this resolution which allows you to move forward that's correct into the next stage so I think uh, those are all questions that we would probably answer once you've got once you know if, if you want to try this project even if it's even feasible to do it then I think we would get down into the nuts and bolts and and that kind of stuff of assessments and streets and roads and things like that yeah, I think once we start getting into the title uh, those kinds of things we can start making the determination if the city indeed does own it doesn't own it sure. Uh, those types of things again that's not a freebie that's something that we'll step in and start working on that'll that's kind of the start base so we'll find out what that is um, and then and then start having dialogue from sure. there and then Joe the contractors oh, that are interested in this um, uh, does this affect their thinking at all if if we do these 36 lots with these people are they thinking of the same lots? I mean, somebody said they wanted to speak to this, so. Yeah. Well, we'll have them after yeah. we finish with Joe. We'll talk to them. Joe, about I got that. one question now. I know you were talking about 2020 possibly starting mm -hmm. construction, right? Mm hmm So it probably could be a little longer because things 20, I, 2020 would be, uh, uh, you know, again, based on what's going on, uh, at minimum 2020. And I, you know, the big, the big issue, and, and this is what I would forewarn uh, individuals that are looking at acquiring property out there, is the report uh, that we that we presented to the city that was done by the engineering firm, and that's soils. I mean, you're talking huge expense just to correct soils, um, and then I, you know, Ron and I had a, a little bit of dialogue. What about the streets and sewer and water and so on? Does that all have to be redone? So the soil correction have to be redone on the streets, as well as new infrastructure put in. So again, that's that's more added cost. So based on that study, we were it was less expensive to buy an existing lot in town than it was to pursue buying buying one of those lots. So the thought is, why don't we start on the east end when we had all this dialogue, get something happening out there kind of focus on a multifamily development where we're not looking at huge infrastructure. We can come right in off 25. But even on this parcel that we were looking at, that was a two-year ago estimate. That's It's about 100000 just to do soil correction on that site. So yeah, yeah, without uh, any infrastructure yet. So right. I, I'm just kind uh, of forewarning you that. You talk about the expense of the uh, green gumbo clay. The only thing I would suggest to you people is that when you talk about this and study this, the one thing that I didn't like is when we had the last study done and the person just said no, they didn't have any alternatives, any suggestions or anything like that. It's just, you got to dig it all out of there in some places it's supposedly 35 feet. So, uh, but to me, being in the construction industry all my life, uh, you can't tell me that you can't go to a wider footing or a bigger footing. You, you can go to better waterproofing because of the environment around the house. So I'm more concerned about the street uh, expanse to get that updated because we can do things. And like I told the person at that meeting, it's, it's a little bit ironic to me that uh, we build on fault lines or we build on sinkholes mm -hmm. and we build on earthquake zones. 
and then here we're worried about the corner of the house might sink two inches. Mm -hmm. uh, so to me, there's a realistic side to this someplace, mm -hmm. and it isn't necessarily that we have to dig <coughs> all that clay out of there. And I would hope that the University of Minnesota or somebody would come back and help us with those questions, and you too. I, and, I, and I agree with you. I mean, I, you, you might be able to talk to other developers that have done different things based on soils. Um, we had another developer that in, had interest, uh, this was more single family, but actually going to a peered system, you know, where you're actually building the house on piers versus in the ground. Um, but again, I'm not an engineer, so I have to rely on their expertise as we move it forward. So I'm basing, th this proposal is based on the information that was done for us a couple of years ago, but I agree with you 100% that as this moves forward, we gotta look at, you know, what, what is the most cost effective way to get, to get it done. Thank okay. Thanks, Joe. Is there anybody else wishing to address the council under the public hearing? Uh, Chris Albrecht. Um, we're actually the one resident in Sandstone Ridge. So we've actually been up there about 10 years now. Uh, Diana is handing out um, some uh, packets we put together for everybody. I don't know if necessary what we're proposing is an alternative given Mr. Wheeler's statements, we might actually, there may even be some overlap here. Um, we've been up there for, as I say, 10 years. We've had a lot of uh, intimate experience with the properties up there. And we are proposing, and if you go to the one of the, the last appendices in there where the area highlighted in yellow, which is the flat off of 25, we are proposing a senior housing development there of uh, 28 single level condominiums, one side by side twin home, five back to back fourplexes, and one back to back sixplex. We're attempting to hold the price on these units to under 225. Um, what, what really drove a lot of this for me was my parents have relocated back here to Minnesota and the challenge of finding senior living for them, senior housing, was really, there was just nothing available. that We really had uh, to do to try to find anything. And I've talked to most of the realtors in town, and over and over again, what I hear is there is a huge need for senior housing and relatively affordable senior housing. Um, we're not looking at building luxury homes up there. We're looking at building affordable, very similar to what's over by the pool off of, uh, oh, um, over by the pool there. So basically, what we're coming up with is we would build these units. We would try to, I, I, again, I don't know about any grant money or what have you, but we've costed it out ourselves. And we believe that we can acquire the properties from, from Goodhue, which I believe some of that money does come back to the city. We've built in that there would be some assessments coming back to cities that we would pay. Uh, however, we'd want to work with the city on that. Uh, the street cost is still a question as to what exactly that is because we don't have engineering back on that yet. Uh, we're looking at the soils and we have built in soil remediation. Basically by building these larger units, our soil meat remediation costs are actually relatively low. And by building the larger units and the larger slabs, we're able to address a lot of these blue clay issues that we've been speaking about. Down in Rochester, they're building a lot of units like this every day in that area and they're having some, quite a bit of success with it. Um, with we would play in Rochester. Oh yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. No, are, and there's. Are they going to slab houses or basement houses? And we're looking; these would all be slab, yes. Okay. And slab is really it, it, in this kind of soil. Digging a basement is just asking for trouble. Uh, so far, what Rick has been building up there now in the the lots just around the corner from us, those are slab, and that's what we're encouraging most of the construction up there to be. Um, but basically, uh, some other things that we would bring to the table. We're attempting to finance most of this locally. Uh, we would partner with local builders. We would use materials from local vendors. And then, you know, I mean, kind of uh, covering some of, you know, what is in the presentation there. Um, traditional forms of housing do not meet to today's needs in this town. Older adults primarily own single family homes. They desire to remain where they are as they age. Cannon Falls is perfectly situated, become an age-friendly community as kind of a smart growth plan going forward. We are just perfectly positioned. 
We're midway between the Twin Cities and Rochester. We have small town charm. We have state-of-the-art medical services. We have an abundance of community-oriented and recreational opportunities for today's active senior. Um, basically, I, and again, I'm not sure if I'm overlapping with Semca or not, and if that there's maybe something that we can work out together, but that is our proposal. It's definitely covered in more detail than what we handed out, but that is our hope. And we would be looking at, what we're asking the city council is to maybe have this workshop or do something. We need about two months to put all the numbers together because we really want to work with the city so the city can recoup on some of the investment that, they've, that, that they're into up there but also find a way to make this go forward. And our timeline would be basically um, 2019 to get things rolling. Question, map-wise, I don't know. Yes. I don't have immediate so, recall. The yellow is where you're proposing. The yellow is what we're that. proposing, and then the detail is, is sans. You is, talked about east and west side. Can you reference those east and west sides versus this map? Okay. I am, yes. And basically that's the flat we right. call it. Uh, the remaining areas shaded in blue would be a mix of single family housing. And that includes the area lower down off 25 in what should we call it, court or whatever that is. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, I, well, I mean, I do get east and west, obviously. That's north. I understand that. I just didn't know how much, like, this yellow yes. thing is not all of that. Yes, and that is where that yellow section is where we're proposing the twin homes and fourplexes. And I understand. Six. I didn't know the nature of the geographical overlap is what I was trying you to identify. No, absolutely. Well, I think it's something that uh, that we're going to need to look at. I mean, mm -hmm. um, at you know, at this point, right. I don't. I mean, with that, do we uh, close the public hearing and table the resolution until we can get some more uh, feedback? Yeah, there might be somebody else, I don't know, in attendance that well, wants I'll, to speak, but and maybe Mr. Wheeler has some comments, too. It just seems to me that maybe there could be a, a work together on this one, but I don't know. Absolutely. That. Yeah, I mean, it's... It's something to look at. I mean, either way. I mean, uh, but I mean, yeah. just want to make sure that we're doing it the right during the public hearing uh, for this part of it. Sure. Is there any more questions for Mr. Albrecht? Well, the only thing I'll say, Robbie, is is I just find life how ironic it is once in a while. Uh, we couldn't get anything moved on this in the past, and now we got two great people here that want to get ahead <coughs> with it. So now, how do we do a balance? Um, it's, uh, and that's the way I'm looking at it right now. How do we all work together and uh, um, make this work for everybody? Uh, because it's, they all have good intentions to uh, invest. And uh, the only thing I would say about it is the ideal thing is the county gets that road through there and we get that trail from there down to the trail. And I think it'd be an excellent, uh, no matter who develops this, uh, the, the one thing I will say that I do like, um, I do like dealing with local people. And uh, him being where he works and stuff and talks about working with local people, um, we don't have that guarantee lots of times with bigger outfits. So, um, But I don't want that to sway it one way or the other. But I still think it's a wonderful thing, but we need to have a lot more discussion about it. Yes. Any other questions? Well, thank you very much for your time. Thank I you. appreciate thank it. You. Thanks, Chris. Yep. You betcha. Thanks, Chris. Is there anybody else wishing to address the council under the public hearing for the resolution 2311 under the Sandstone Ridge Development Plan? Joe. Joe, you want to come back up? Yeah, what I'd like to comment on is um, this is one uh, developer. I've, I have not talked to this developer, but this could be one of hopefully two or three developers that may move a proposal forward. Keep in mind, Semtra, we're not the ones interested in owning or operating um, this facility, but allowing the opportunity to do an invite. So once we've got 
uh, the property, number one, get it out of the foreclosure and got the property, um, we will be soliciting proposals, and uh, this gentleman would be welcome to submit his proposal along with other proposals. The, um, I, and I'm optimistic. I'm not saying that this is what was he suggesting is a good idea, but this starts the process. Um, if you don't move forward on this and go with that, then then you, the city, I mean, there's a process that still has to be um, uh, gone through. So once we've solicited proposals, got an invite, um, we'll, we'll prioritize those, those proposals, work with the city, hopefully select one, two, or three proposals and move them forward. I think that's being extremely optimistic. Um, and then begin the process of getting the, the development done. So I, I, I want to assure the council that it's not SEMSHA, the one that's looking at owning and operating this. Um, it's just to help the city get the process going so we can get uh, find a developer. A lot of things we need to look at with the developer, obviously, is uh, their ability, what they've done in the past, all those things, what they're proposing costs, as he's indicating the numbers. Um, all that becomes key um, as part of the selection of a developer to move a project forward. The East End was the one that made the most sense to us to start because it's closest to County Road 25, right? Yep. Yep. Um, so you don't have as much infrastructure you might not have to worry about. So I, again, I'm, I'm just going strictly off of what we know on the, uh, based on the last report that was done. Would you be able to, like he was saying, 2019 to start possibly? I it's mean, up to the developer. So if we have a developer, that yourself, could be part of the together. pointing process that if he can move it forward, he's got the financing capability and the ability to move it forward. That's all a positive, uh, positive thing for us approving. Again, he still has to go through all the city stuff, uh, yeah. the planning and zoning and, and so on, and I'll be working closely with Ron and the mayor and, and other co ad hoc committee on, uh, and in fact, I'll make a suggestion that you, uh, we might get two or three from the city that's part of the selection for a developer within the, within the city. But it begins the process. Right. Okay. Question. Mm -hmm. uh, when you solicit these proposals, will it be for workforce housing, or would you open it up so that we're open to elderly ideas. and or workforce, okay. uh, either or. There's a huge need. There has been market studies done. Um, I presented some of that information in the um, uh, redevelopment plan. There was, um, I think they're a couple years old now, two or three years old, but we definitely have a high demand for elderly in, in uh, Cannon Falls as well as workforce housing. Mm -hmm. So I, I think we look at them both and... and your, um, your solicitation for proposals be broad enough to include those sorts of proposals. That's correct. Great. Yep. I think it'd be interesting too to have a small area of mini homes. There's kids coming out of college. <laughs> There's kids that are uh, got a lot of debt and are working, and just like that kind of stuff. Right. Uh, to me, one thing to think about up here, and I like the word better as affordable housing. Um, it, we need keep thinking about affordable housing because everything is getting so expensive nowadays it's unbelievable the plus on the elderly side based on where you go with that is hopefully that frees up some single-family dwellings in the community and allows younger families to move in so there's a win-win all the way around both ways but I, I think it's um, we set up criteria of what we're looking for we'll work with the city on that for de for development um, this is the first developer that I've heard that actually had interest in coming in. That was the whole idea of soliciting and see if we can get, um, obviously I'm hoping he'll continue to bring his proposal forward along with other proposals within the city. or uh, Not just in the city, but um, uh, developers that are both for-profit and non-profit developers. Any more questions for Joe? Thank you. Is there anybody else wishing to address a council under the public hearing? Is there anyone else wishing to address the council under the public hearing? Is there anyone else wishing to address the council under the public hearing? If not, we will close the public hearing at this time and the council uh, needs to discuss or approve the resolution or we can, uh, again, table it and look at uh, both proposals and, and make a determination at a later date also on this. I got a question for Ron. If we if we take and uh, approve this to go ahead with it, and then next week we have two people come in, Samantha and what?
permits that they bought a lot from the county again. Uh, does that hold that up or can we still do that? Or if we lock in these certain lots, uh, then they can only be sold to them or how does this work? I spoke with uh, Carolyn Holmston at the uh, county, the county uh, finance director, and she said that she would notify us of any future potential sales. And the reason it's it would be good to know that is just so somebody doesn't purchase a lot that all of a sudden it's, it's on one of the streets that's in terrible shape that we have to reconstruct, that they don't purchase it assuming that we're just going to automatically reconstruct that street, put a new curb and gutter, et cetera. So she will let us know by parcel when she gets an interest in it. But um, according to the statute, I believe, and Joe can correct me, but in working with this project over probably over a couple, two, three years, um, we need to submit a plan. The county needs to see a plan from the city in order for them to sell the property to us or give the property to us and we haven't produced that plan yet because we haven't we haven't had one now this is the first time that something's come forward yep. Yep. Um, as a as a proposed redevelopment plan yep and there's certain there's certain criteria there's certain criteria under the statute Leroy that has to be met uh, with that plan depending on whether it's blight or other issues that come about so that it can be sold to certain individuals for some of these properties. As you come up property. into the west west end of that uh, sandstone ridge, um, Chris and his wife have three lots there now, right? Yes. Uh, the three first three lots on the left on Bluff Drive as you go up towards sandstone to the east. And then somebody else just recently purchased, purchased the corner lot plus three lots up. So they've... Right, I know. So there's that. four four lots there, seven, three across the street, three and four across the street from each other. It's once it gets further uh, west than or east than that that it gets a little bit scary as far as the street and there's going to be some more expense. And Right. And, and we do need to hear more about the road <laughs> situation. Um, I mean, um, Tom mentioned one time that some of the lines have pulled off or something um, if that's really happening up there, then basically we're going down and completely replacing mains and everything. If, if, uh, if it's just settlement on the road, you could probably go down three, four feet and put a liner in there, keep the water out and go back, fill it in. So there, there's a lot of issues there and hopefully they can help us with that answer or we should have a workshop about all this. So I, I just have concerns that we're, t we're not tying ourselves into something we can't back out of if it doesn't go in the right direction. My understanding is that this resolution is not tying us to anything. It's just permitting more of the ideas to be developed so that we can determine whether or not we want to tie ourselves to anything at a later future date subject to workshops or other broader discussion. And in light of that, I'd make a motion to approve this resolution. Second. I have a motion by Cedar and a motion and a second by Mike to approve resolution 2311 uh, for the Sandstone Ridge Development Plan from Centra. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Resolution passes five to one. All right, that moves us on to the consent agenda. Items on this area of the agenda may be adopted or they may be removed and placed on the business area of the agenda for discussion purposes before approving. For those folks at home, we'll read the consent agenda. Item A is adjust and correct claims for accounting periods ending November 30th, 2017. Item B are the meeting minutes for the November 21st, 2017 City Council meeting. Item C, second reading and adoption of Ordinance 355 amending Chapter 152 of the Cannon Falls City Code concerning the zoning map and zoning classification of a specific property. Item D is second reading of ado an adoption of Ordinance 356 and approved summary publication of ordinance annexing certain property abutting the city of Cannon Falls. 
Item E, approve agreement with Goodhue County for the State Building Code Administration. Item F, recycling contract extension. Item G, application for payment number one for the First English Church Bank erosion repair. Item H, application for payment number two for Alexander Court project. Item I, resolution 2312, designating polling places for 2018. Item J, resolution 2313, adopting the public improvement and special assessment agreement for the Grand Stay Hotel. Item K, approve labor agreement with intent, uh, International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 49. Item L, Resolution 2315, providing for post-employment health care savings plan. Are there any items anybody wishes to bring down for discussion? G. F. Okay. Item G will become item 8C. And which one was it? Yeah, yeah. And item F will become, which is a recycling contract, will become item 8D. Any others? If not, Chair, I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda minus items F and G. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Morris and a second by Ken. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Carries. That moves us on to council business this evening. Uh, item A is resolution 2314, adopting the 2018 tax levy and budget. Ron. Thank you. Uh, as you're aware, city council, we've had uh, four budget workshops and or meetings regarding the budget. At the September meeting we had to adopt a proposed or a preliminary levy and from there we can't go any higher than that in December at this public input or public meeting for budget adoption. At that time in September we were looking at a levy increase of 7.8 percent and because the city did have a substantial tax capacity increase which is good news, uh, the tax rate increase at that time would have been about a 2% tax rate increase for property owners. Since that time, at the last meeting, you directed staff to come forward with the proposal that's in front of you, which is a 5.5% levy increase, but the tax rate, because of the increase in the tax capacity of the city, or the tax base, if you want to call it that, uh, this actually decreases the tax rate by 0.337%. And what that means, without going through all the, the, the boring data here, but the, uh, for a $200,000 market value home, property taxes would decrease. Now this is just the city portion, not school or county or HRA or miscellaneous uh, levies. Just the city portion would be $27 a year decrease $250,000 home would be a $34 approximately decrease in property taxes for the year. Included in some of the highlights or lowlights, if you want to call it that, the, uh, that includes a health insurance premium increase for employees of 9%. That was the premium. Uh, we're looking at about a 6% increase in premiums and then a 3% kind of overall because folks are getting older. And council implemented the classification and compensation study that was just recently done and approved. Included in that budget is the capital request of the Cannon Valley Trail of uh, $34,700. And I guess that's, that's kind of the, but again, we've looked at this for, uh, this will be our fifth meeting, fifth time around. Started the process in early August, or August 15th was our first workshop. Yep. And it's not a public hearing, but it is, you could accept public input most certainly. Yep. All right. Any discussion on the budget? That's good. If 
not, uh, Chair will take a motion to approve uh, resolution 20, where'd it go? Resolution 2314, adopting the 2018 tax levy and budget. So move. Second. Motion by Mike, a second by Morris. Is there any discussion? Is there anybody from the public that wishes to comment? Yes. Please come forward. First of all, I'm a little confused as to all right, Brent Grease, I live on Grove Street. Um, I'm a little confused as a procedure here because I got my uh, proposed taxes sheet here and it says at 630 there was supposed to be a meeting about property tax and it seems like we're kind of a little bit of a footnote here somewhere near the end of the meeting. Yeah, unfortunately we double double scheduled the 630 public hearing. So that by law this is required to happen, is that not correct? At 630 or as close to nearby as you can. Okay. Well, it sounds like you guys already voted on the, the resolution before you even had the meeting or had the hearing. All right. I think you all need to take better care on how you deal with that in the future then. Um, I'm a little confused as far as the numbers you were, you were talking about because you're saying that my taxes should have went down and when they went up by almost 12%. What happens with that, Mr. Reese, is that is the preliminary freeze, that was... Not freeze, not Freeze. Okay, I'm sorry about that. What happens is that's based off of the preliminary budget that we have to set back in September. Mm -hmm. Usually when we set the, set the... Once we set that budget, we cannot raise it, we can decrease it, which is what I, we... I understand that. And that's what we were looking to do. Those numbers were what... If we didn't change anything, that's what the... Ta that's what your property taxes would be. Okay. But, but you, what you might see, excuse me, is uh, do you have a market value increase on there? I do. I already have went with the county on that and lost. But um, yeah, because this is if is if your property valuation would have stayed the same, you would see, based on the proposal, the preliminary about a two percent increase in the city portion of the taxes. Um, but with this, it'll be a point little less than a 1% decrease in the property, the city portion. Well, you're, of the you're talking percentages, or what's the actual dollar amount of our budget for last year versus this year? As far as? How much money did the city budget last year versus how much they're budgeting this year? Well, that, that breakdown is on, uh, Linnell, I'll let you take that from there, but we've got a total levy of 2.654 million. This year, correct for and for twenty eighteen. For twenty eighteen, and last year was two point five one five. Call it five one six. Two point five one six. You're saying? Yes, sir. Well, all right. Yeah. Those are rounded. What's a thousand dollars? About twenty seven thousand percentage point, roughly. All right. Well, and I can look at that with you too, if you want to. As I'm just looking here, I mean, last year my taxes went up by close to 5%, and this year they're going up by almost 12%. I'm talking just the city portion. Yeah, last year was, I think it was a little over 4.3, somewhere near 4.2, 4.3% was what the... Yeah, three point. I'm trying to the duck. Yeah, close to three percent, four percent. And this year that flattens out. You're going to spend roughly one hundred forty thousand dollars more this year than last year. And a large part of that is attributable to health insurance increases. And then council did implement the uh, classification compensation study that the city was about 6% under market is what we found as far as employee salaries.
All right, well, like I said, you all are saying you're spending less. I see more there, and like I said, mine went up 12%. So to me, it's not as rosy a picture as, as you guys just painted it here. So. I didn't say we're spending less. The tax rate's less. Tax rate's less. Still. For me, it's completely different than that. I'm 12 times worse than that, because you're saying it went down by one point, whatever you said. And mine went up by 12, so. I can look at it with you. Well, I'm already missing another appointment, so I got to go. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else wishing to address the council? Jeff, I'm at all 710 Cannon Court, Cannon Falls. Uh, just to kind of follow up on that, you're saying a decrease, but you also said there's an increase in the uh, tax base, basically the value of the total property in the city. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. The levy increased by the proposal here is 5.5%. We had an increase in the tax capacity of about 5.85%. Okay, well, according to my evaluation here, that, there's about a 10% increase in valuation. So to me, that seems like basically a 10% increase. Is your property valued at that much higher? Right. Valuation, the market right. value? Right. Yeah, that's, this, is, this is independent of the market value. This is just the tax rate. That's what I'm talking about, is the tax valuation. Yeah, has gone and up ten percent. If you've got an issue with that in April, the county does put on a right. I understand that, but my you. point is really, even though you're saying a point two four percent decrease in um, in the levy, it's really still an increase because the value increased ten percent. Well, if your value increases, yeah, there, there's there's going to be an increase. Right. So what I'm what, what I'm saying is. There's really a 10% increase on the tax and not really a cut. Yeah. If you look at it from my perspective, my house went up, so I got to pay more tax based on a 10% increase. You follow what I'm saying here? Well, I hear what you're saying, you're, but you're talking strictly from a valuation standpoint. Right. And cash out of pocket, I understand that. Right. That's, I mean, that's what I have to go by is how much cash I got left in my pocket. And um, a 10% increase, I mean, I'd love to have a 10% increase in my paycheck, too. But the fact is, I probably make less now than I did probably 10 to 15 years ago. So um, there's, I guess my point is, there are no easy solutions to this, but there are simple ones. And spending more is always seems easy, but um, at the end of the day, you got to find a way to keep things fair to the taxpayers as well. Um, does the city have any influence over the valuation of real property? No. Okay, so that 10% increase is not something that the city could do anything about even if we want to. The most that right. we could do is continue to, to impose negative percentage uh, tax base or yeah, tax right. rate for us. So right, my, and I understand. I mean, okay. my, the fact that my house is worth more. Uh, as worth more is not necessarily bad news, right. but what I'm saying is when you set your levy, it's based on a 10% increase in property value and not just a 0.24% decrease. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to address the council on the levy? Okay, I've got a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. The budget passes 5-1. Here we go. Okay, that moves us on to item 8B on council business tonight, the Cannon River Winery Expansion Request. Uh, Cannon River Winery is proposing to expand their building by approximately 19,040 square feet 
directly immediately to the west of their existing facility. Um, they've they've uh, come to the EDA with with uh, some of their request, and then the uh, EDA's and that that information is included in your packet as far as what the EDA was has discussed. There's a memo in there from uh, Community Development Director Maroney as far as what the uh, EDA has recommended or what they will be determining as far as their part of it. There's two different components here. There's the EDA component and then the City Council component. And perhaps uh, I, I, there's been a committee that's worked on the, from the city perspective or from the EDA perspective, uh, Mayor Robinson, uh, Councilmember Althoff and uh, Roxanne from the EDA president and I don't know Robbie if you want to take it from there or well I mean <coughs> list of requests well I mean we could we can do that I mean the uh, and we, we have a term sheet that was provided to us uh, from Cannon River Winery uh, if you guys will look at the items down uh, circled in blue are the items that uh, um, Ron Stoll, the owner of the winery, um, has uh, requested uh, from the city's portion of it, the items in yellow, are the items that are being addressed by the Economic Development Authority. And I know Mr. Stoll is anxious to talk about his project too, if you want to right. maybe start from there. Uh, we can do that and then we can, uh, and we can go from there. Ron, if you want to come up and... Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, Ron Stoll, uh, 3635 Great Oak Circle, uh, Egan, Minnesota. Uh, thanks for the invite to uh, come up here and speak. I hope this is a little more interesting than tax levies. <laughs> uh, we'll save that for another day. Uh, you'll see we have a number of uh, participants here uh, tonight, or guests. <coughs> uh, there's been a, I believe in a complete transparency and I've been involved with a lot of people here in, in the community as it relates to this. I bought the winery about 18 months ago from uh, John and Maureen. Uh, they started this winery about 14, 15 years ago uh, here in town. I understood there was some capacity uh, constraints when I bought it. Um, I didn't realize uh, to what extent. Uh, we, the building was kind of set up with about a 2,500, 3,000 square foot uh, area for production. And that's good uh, for about uh, 4,000 gallons of wine a year on a typical basis. Uh, Sam, our winemaker, is here somewhere this evening, and uh, he's been able to crank out uh, close to 10,000. But if any of you have gone through the winery or through the parking lots or everything else, you know, when we do bottling or have grapes come in or anything else, uh, it's, uh, it's pretty evident that we have uh, exceeded uh, where we're currently at. So what we proposed, or what I proposed, is uh, this expansion. Uh, and this will uh, enable us to be a, you know, a co-located facility, have our uh, production uh, wine cellar, uh, some warehousing, all under one roof, uh, so completely enclosed, so you won't have uh, any visibility of any type of production you know, from this street. Uh, the businesses that I've, that I've worked with in the area are uh, Altoff's Hardware. We have um, uh, Ryan from Mill Street. We have, you know, you know Chris from uh, Nick Steiner. Uh, we have, you can see the brewery representation here. Uh, we have uh, Ferndale's representing us here. And I think I must have around 20 employees. And because it does, it's not just us, it impacts whatever we do, good or bad. It impacts a lot of people in the community here. So really it's just gonna be we wanted to be, come up here, add some clarification if, uh, as needed uh, to the council, uh, give you some stats. We have approximately, uh, currently 50 employees. We have around 10 full-time employees and approximately uh, 40 part-time. And it varies with the season. You know, it's a little busier in the summertime and a little quieter during uh, January, February, and March. Uh, we have approximately 100,000 visitors coming to uh, the winery each year. 
as of the last 12 months. We perform about uh, 40 weddings, probably at least another dozen to 15 uh, corporate events. We do the school play. Uh, we have very significant brand recognition. Uh, we're one of the top wineries currently in the state of Minnesota as far as both volume and wine quality as we've received a number of awards. Uh, we're the number one winery as far as the uh, Minnesota State Fair. Uh, we're at the St. Paul Winter Carnival. Uh, you've heard some restaurants like uh, Mancini's where the host red and wine there. They're an iconic uh, bar restaurant in St. Paul. Uh, Vino in the Valley. You know, they're, they're about 40 miles from here, a uh, big place in Wisconsin. And Larry, who owns that, is also doing now Vino Above the Valley. And he's in a career all over wine out there, too. Uh, we've been pushing uh, heavily into uh, Wisconsin. I've, been, uh, I've hired another full-time sales manager. And Sam and I, uh, which is our winemaker, have been spending a lot of time working with companies like Piggly Wiggly, Kroger's, big national firms uh, to expand our presence. What that means to you is it means a more vibrant uh, local business. So kind of that's my, the background. Uh, if you have any specific questions for me, I'd be you know happy to answer them. Uh, uh, the, the contractor that I have uh, hired and that would be actually building this facility, if we stay here in Cannon Falls, would be uh, R.J. Ryan. R.J. Ryan is uh, one of the top three, four. Uh, contractors in the state of Minnesota. They do about $200 million a year in business. I've worked with them in the past, and some of our employees have uh, their spouses that are involved and have uh, been employees of R.J. Ryan, our contractors. Very reputable, high quality, and I encourage you to look them up. And with that, I'll kind of turn it over to uh, you gentlemen and ladies. Anybody got questions for Ron? <coughs> Uh, well, I mean, just a little bit more on, on the background. Uh, I don't know if uh, any of you have ever gone on TripAdvisor, and we look at Cannon Falls, and and uh, if you're going if you're going to Cannon Falls, what's there to do? Uh, if you bring up TripAdvisor right now, the first thing that's listed on there is the Cannon Valley Trail. Uh, I mean, we're going to be contributing another, you know, forty. $50,000 to the trail again for the next 10 years. The second thing on there is the Cannon Valley Winery. That's the next thing that comes up on TripAdvisor. Next thing is Ferndale Market. Then it's the river. Then it's the golf courses. So, I mean, as you can see, not only um, does uh, is the winery a mainstay in downtown, it's, it's also a, a, a destination spot for a lot of people that are that are visiting our city so um and uh this is something that i mean that i think we need to look at really hard uh there's been a lot of negotiations there's been negotiations going on and there'll be you know continue to be negotiations on, on different things through the eda uh, i know ron uh is is kind of asking if we would uh, get uh when it comes to certain parts of the negotiations that we put it all in one so he negotiates with one uh, group instead of uh, negotiating with you know two and three and four different entities as we as we move forward. Um, if we look at what uh, is on the uh, sheet for the request for the city, um, what the page of the packet are you looking? I'm at? looking at uh, page three. Okay. Those are the ones circled in blue there. Is that the most current status of where our negotiations are? It's not the part where there's on um, page the 9 city. of 13 this where it says the EDA. This is, this is the city's stuff right here. Okay. I get it. Or the, or the things there. Well, let's start with the EDA first. Okay. Yeah. All right. <coughs> Go ahead, John, if you want to take that. The, um, the land over there has been estimated at, which is the west of the current winery building, has been estimated at about one hundred seventy-five to $200,000. And the, the EDA has offered, you requested the land for a dollar, and the EDA met and offered it to you for 75000 which I can see uh, you've rejected. Or has it just not been accepted? Not it's just accepted. not been accepted. Okay, those not are different things. Right. Okay. So that's kind of 
the first step, and I think we got to resolve that before we get into the. Well, that's council. that's well, that's not what the council. We need to look at the council stuff tonight, guys. We're the, that's the EDA, and the EDA is a right. separate entity of the council on that portion yeah, of it. It all ties together, though. Well, right. it will, portion. but we we still need to to look at moving forward as as a city portion, and look at what the term sheet is for the city, not just. Okay. The EDA at this point. The EDA is, is has been negotiating, uh, you know, with with Ron on the EDA portion, the part that entails the EDA. So we should only be looking at the things in the blue. We circle. need to look at the blue circles at this time, the and then all right, and then at that time, uh, there's some other things that that we can discuss and and, and go forward and uh, on that. Ron in, included in that first item, the land for a dollar, um, the. Property ID of uh, 52-141-60 is the, the approximate parcel that would be between the current Lee Chevrolet building and the winery, which is uh, about 4,200 square feet is what that parcel would be if it was separated out. So that would be a city, <coughs> city yep. uh, right. issue that could ultimately be transferred to the EDA, but that's, that's yeah, a and city we'll, issue. And we'll look at that portion here in, in, in a few minutes. Uh, thanks for reminding me on that one. Mm -hmm. uh, first thing there on item three, guys, is the replacement and aban uh, abandonment relocation costs of any costs related to utilities completed or paid by the city. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Greg, the uh, water and sewer are already there on that location? Yeah, both lots have water and sewer service now. Okay, so moving those, I mean, if, if anything had to be moved, it would be minimal. I would anticipate part of the building construction. Okay. But that would be impacted by if there were an environmental cleanup that had to be occurred, which I understand is an EDA expense that could impact existing utilities. Couldn't maybe, it? Maybe. Okay. The septic system in the back, is that going to need a, a study on it or where's that at? That'd be part of the EDA work yeah. or the environmental work the EDAs haven't done. Right now, Leroy, the EDA has approved the uh, environmental work, phase one, phase two. That's uh, already in work on that lot. Uh, it was determined that uh, it needed to be done so we know what's there, no matter what project was there. So that is already in work. Uh, second item on there is a uh, design and install sidewalk uh, on the west side uh, along the river. That's been previously discussed uh, with the EDA about uh, putting a sidewalk coming up from the trail. Uh, I think uh, the cost on that, Greg, uh, was between forty and fifty thousand, somewhere like that, yep. to make it ADA accessible. You got a pretty good grade to get into that next parking lot. So yeah, that's that's the ballpark we're looking at. Okay. So where would that sidewalk go? <coughs> I'm looking at a at the overhead view on page eight of our packet. <coughs> It's got the red square around the, the the one lot. Where would the sidewalk be? The west. It would be in the the EDA lot that's all between the Lee Shev site and the the hill going down to the bike trail. Right. Okay. So it would come off of Mill Street. It would come off of Mill Street and go down to the parking lot of the trailhead, okay. not to the trail along the river. Gotcha. And the EDA, EDA bought that for that purpose. Okay. Right. So that that was thought of already That's not yeah. right um, the other item would be any applicable platting and other applicable land use applications completed uh, and paid for by the city to be contingent upon the uh, upon it moving forward uh, platting is is very negligible as far as costs go getting that done and the last thing uh, is uh, pay-as-you-go tax abatement for 15 years uh, and uh, estimates from the city and the county. I know that uh, Ron uh, has spoken with the county we have. Uh, on abatement, and uh, from what I'm understanding, uh, the county would be willing to look at abatement also. If, if the city decides to do abatement, the county would also help uh, with this abatement purpose or, or go along with that. Um, they seemed very receptive to the council. Yeah, they were very receptive to the idea. Uh, on, on the abatement side, uh, it fits within their uh, their EDA uh, because it would be uh, production just in that new portion of the building. So underneath that item, it says if county is unwilling to participate, we talk about the TIF, uh, and that 
that number is considerably lower than the than the tax abatement. Is there a is there a reason to go with one versus the the, the other? Dave Dave Maroney from the EDA up here. He can explain that a little better to make sure we put it out the right way. You thought sitting in the back was going to get you out of this, didn't you? I was hoping. <laughs> um, real simple, I guess, explanation on the, on the differences between the tax increment and the tax abatement relative to Ron's request. Um, the 15 years of tax abatement, county and city, are projected based on Peggy Treble's valuation estimate for the proposed addition. Uh, over the 15-year period is the 533,000. In that case, the city would approve uh, the abatement for just the city portion of the taxes. The county board would have to approve an abatement of just the county taxes. It would be two different approvals, city and county. If both jurisdictions approved it based on the numbers that we've been using over the 15-year period, it would, it would amount to the 533,000. The alternative that we discussed with Ron is just a, a tax income and financing district alone, which would just be a city determination. And in this case, the nine-year projection is the maximum term that we could use tax increment for this type of project in that location. So obviously at a $300,000 tax increment where the city can take the portion of the taxes that the city generates and the county just with your approval, like we have for uh, Artisan Plaza or formerly Grandpa's Garage, Dave Olson, the city approved a tax increment financing district for that project, and you're able to capture both the city portion and the county portion. But it was your decision. County had no uh, requirement, no authority to veto a decision by the council. So again, in this case, we can't easily create a tax increment district through the city process alone beyond the nine years statutorily. That's the difference. Okay. So the time, the time, the time frame. Time frame. Yep. So yep. Big difference. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, and I may have missed it, and or this may be a foolish question, but we're talking about taxes on just the newly developed portion of these now. It will be one parcel eventually, right? But we're talking about just taxes on that. So the Correct. continuing right. stream of pr revenue from the existing winery, what's today the winery, would continue unimpeded. Yes. Yep. Okay. I didn't hear that part, Dave. The existing building would stay the same? Yeah, there, there, there's, there's no abatement proposed in these numbers or in these projections, no abatement or no tax increment for the existing wine rebuilding. Ron Stoll will continue to pay taxes as he always would, city, county, school, against the existing wine rebuilding. It would only be the addition, the 19 or 20,000 square foot addition. That tax base would be captured either by abatement or tax increment. So basically, he'd still be paying taxes on the, and can, I know that building sets, yep, I know that building sets on two parcels that uh, he's paying taxes on now. Any other discussion or any more questions for Ron on this? I got a few, Ron. Um, <coughs> you know, the, the one thing I hate about this stuff is if things aren't going good, then you got to try to figure out how to make it better, and then when things are going good, then we also got to figure out how to make it better. So this, um, I'm excited about that you want to do this expanding and invest in the town and that kind of stuff. I also know that we've got a heck of a parking problem down there, and everything I look at that you want to do seems to me like it's going to create more parking problems. So now I'm not just looking at at your building and giving the store away to uh, keep you here and do this, but uh, what do we do with the parking situation? We also, um, um, if there's going to be parking someplace else and be kind of a shuttle, I haven't heard anything about that. I know we got a terrible situation with bus drops off in the front and with the angle parking that's there now. Um, and hopefully in the design something better comes out of that with buses dropping people off up there. Um, so I don't know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's so hard to know what to do with because we take and turn that road, shut that road down and, and you build your new building across there. Then we turn around and shrink our existing parking 
which uh, we really need when we have the farmer's market there. And I know they're talking about going to Grandpa's garage, but that hasn't been decided. So now we create a situation where um, you're either going to have the same existing par uh, parking there or more parking, and then we've only got one inlet into the place. So how do we turn around and work with the state and get another two inlets or one inlet, one outlet? I don't know. So your growing problems really concern me that um, uh, It just uh, makes quite a mess out of the parking and the road situation down there. And if I would have had the ideal situation and known about this a year ago, to me the ideal situation would have been is we should have had you out to Grandpa's garage and we should have had Grandpa's garage in Cannon Falls. You'd have had all your parking and all the room you needed out there. Um, I would hope there would be uh, a better place or a better investment for you. Um, I think you're you're not only doing the retail, you're doing the manufacturing too. Um, and I totally understand your expansion problems and uh, the winery situation. But I also know that the two guys earlier talked about our tax base going up when it ain't supposed to and all this. Uh, we talked about um, in our tax budget that we had roughly about $400,000 income last year extra, and we still went up another 1% almost. So um, it isn't that I'm against the winery, but I, I think there's a, a better spot for it. Um, my de deal situation would be you'd buy the mall out there, and we'd move uh, some of them people back downtown. <coughs> so, I'm not here to tell you that I'm against it or for it. I'm just telling you how I'm thinking about the whole overall project, that it's, uh, it's another investment that the town is making in a business uh, for 15 years, um, and uh, our taxes keep going up. So I uh, want to wish you the best. Thank you for thinking about doing this, but to me it really caused a lot of problems. and. The ideal situation to me with uh, the old East Chevrolet building would be as um, restrooms in there and a community room on one end overlooking that river and, and um, stuff for the trail. Um, but I also know or listen to your read you stuff where you need to expand and you need more room, but um, I just don't feel it's a good area for it. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, thanks, uh, Leroy. I appreciate your comments. I'd like to address uh, probably each one of them uh, singularly. Uh, first of all, as far as that, I take exception that is not a road going through there. I think it's been addressed before with uh, uh, the council. I believe there's been research done on it. It's not a road. It's not an alley. It's not a game trail. Okay? It is an entrance and an exit to a parking lot. Uh, and this, the second issue as far as uh, parking. You know, right now, there's you know 30 to 40 parking spots in there right now. I've owned it for a year and a half. Last 12 months, we've had 100,000 customers, okay, through that facility. I heard that. Not one time, okay, since I've been there, and I'm there on almost every single weekend, have I heard of one customer complain that they didn't have adequate parking and they couldn't get to in or out of my facility. That's a big thing, okay. Uh, if we added 30 more parking spots somewhere else, would that relieve any uh, tension? Not much. By delimiting 30 uh, parking spots, it's also not going to restrict uh, the city significantly. So what people are actually doing is they are finding spots on streets and other parking lots and expanding their footprint. What that forces people to do is walk into the diner, okay, uh, the, the new brewery, uh, to stop by the new antique store, to walk, walk by the hardware store. They actually are required to actually walk through the city and it makes the city vibrant. And I've been down there on many weekends, and you can just walk around the community down there, and it's very, very busy, okay, in a very positive way. Without the winery, you're right. If we move, and we do have alternatives, okay, we've checked into a couple of cities, not playing the hand heavy, because I've been very, very straightforward. I would prefer to stay in Cannon Falls. But if, ne if necessary, uh, we have two other cities that are laying out the red carpet for us. And I don't think you'd have any problem with parking in that spot then at that point going forward. Unfortunately, I think it's going to impact 
a lot of the other businesses and their families and their employees. We have 50 employees alone, and I've made commitments to those 50 employees, okay, that we're going to have a top-notch facility. It's either going to be here or someone else. There's career paths, okay. I still believe in that. I've owned small businesses. I like to develop people. I told Sam, our winemaker, an assistant winemaker, that we're going to have a state-of-the-art facility. I heard a new uh, full-time sales manager uh, just a few weeks ago, okay, because we're expanding operations, okay. Kathleen, which is sitting right here in their place in this uh, group here, she wants to develop uh, further as a general manager. So, I mean, we, it, it, we are directly involved, and a lot of these employees live right down here in Cannon Falls currently. So, you know, I may come across a little bit passionate about this, but uh, what we are doing is trying to come up with a facility that will be the nicest winery in the state of Minnesota, okay? And it's going to keep you on the map. It's going to be a destination for a lot of people to come to. You know, I live a few miles north here, about 20 miles north here, and uh, it pulls people from the Twin Cities, the demographics, from Rochester right now, from the east side of Wisconsin. So you're getting a huge draw. They come in here and they spend money. The new hotel came down here. You know, we're going to book 40 to 50 weddings to keep his hotel busy. Without that, he says, uh, his whole business model goes to shut. Okay? Because that's not what he was planning on. He said he was lured to Cannon Falls specifically because of that. I know it's not my issue, but, it's, but someone's going to have to explain to them, okay, why the decision was made if it was the other direction. So I know I appreciate your comments, but I wanted to give you a rebuttal uh, to those statements. Well, the one thing I will argue with you is that the winery is a special thing. Um, we, um, how do I say that? Uh, people love to ski, so they, there's people out there that ski and go nuts over it. There's people that love wine and go nuts over it. I'm fine with that. But I will also say that it is a community thing, and it is about everybody else, too, that uh, um, there is going to be people that come to Cannon Falls to go to Thora May, and they're going to say, let's stop over to the winery. It's just down the street here. So it isn't all about the winery bringing people to Cannon Falls. <coughs> the other thing I will say with uh, the people coming to Cannon Falls, um, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but also we do have to furnish protection and safety and ambulance and all that. So the more traffic we have, the more we're inclined to spend money on that end too. So I'm thinking about the whole overall picture. And, and certainly, I believe these people right here that you're looking at right here, the vast majority of them, probably differ with your concept as far as saying you don't want to have people coming here to Cannon Falls to spend money. These are business owners right here. These are employees. You know what? And this was a lousy weather day. If it had been a good weather day, we probably had twice the amount of people showing up here. So as far as a lot of these people are passionate, they're taking their evening off to come here to sit, and a number of them would like to speak if you want to give them the floor as far as what it means to them. Well, and, and you know, I'll tell you, I met with Chris about it, so he gave me his input. Oh, we have more than Chris here. Uh, yeah, we okay, okay. Well, we're, so we're not going to make this uh, uh, going back and forth between you guys on this portion of it. Right. Whether or not I mean, business is right. good for Cannon Falls, right. of course it is. Yes. Of course okay. it is. Okay. I mean, and, and just to answer Leroy's question, Jeff, is, have there been any issues uh, providing protection or uh, safety to? No. <clears throat> Excuse me. No, not per se. Um, the you know, type of incidents that we have would be just the standard ones we would have in any other part of the city. Um, you know, when the, uh, you know, as Ron well knows, when it's, when it's busy on Mill Street, uh, we haven't had a significant number of uh, accidents or anything uh, that, uh, you know, when I've looked at the numbers that jump out that put that at any more at risk than uh, any of the other streets that uh, we have in our downtown area. And actually, when we have our weddings, we've had Jeff and Jeff's staff, okay, monitor and sit at our weddings to make sure that we don't have any issues. And if they are, I think we only had one little incident way before my time. I think it was addressed quickly. One, one individual had too much to drink, and it was cut off. Yep. And that's yep. not something that, you know, just started when the winery started having uh, uh, wedding receptions. They contracted with the, uh, the city to have officers for all of their wedding events, and we've continued that uh, to this day. And Ron is correct. I think we've only had uh, one or two where there were just cases where somebody had a little bit too much and, uh, and tried to do a few things they shouldn't do. And they were quickly resolved. Uh, his staff is fabulous to work with uh, relative to the events that we've 
uh, had officers there. And so I have a question for Robbie and for our Ron. Hmm. What type of, I mean, what's, uh, this says information, uh, discuss project and request. So what, I mean, what type of action are we looking for tonight from us? Well, I think tonight, what we're looking for tonight is uh, you know, to let Ron know that we would be willing to negotiate with him on uh, possibly, I mean, on the abatement, which it'll be a, a further discussion going on with that. And then also, uh, we need to look at the piece of property that is, uh, that's owned by the city, the, the portion of, that abuts the EDA parking property. Lot. Yeah, the parking lot interest. We need to look at that portion. Uh, which is, like I said, that 4,200 square feet of property. And uh, if we're going to do something there, we need to make a determination on what type of price we would put on that so that he knows what that is, so that as we go forward nego in negotiations, if he says he accepts it, fine. If he doesn't, then, you know, he comes back with something else and, and we go from there. I mean, it's just standard negotiations and trying to do what we can to meet, you know, his needs and, and the city's needs at the same time. Uh, going forward and I would like to uh, I think that and then also uh, possibly like I said earlier uh, having it to where uh, he's dealing with one entity instead of having to deal with multiple entities uh, going on that um, I would like to uh, invite any of the uh, other business owners in town that may want to speak uh, on this to come forward and uh, and let us know uh, on any of this uh, like I said before, uh, if, when people can hear about Cannon Falls or come to Cannon Falls, there's two or three different items that are two or three different things that come about. And uh, if we don't grow, if we don't keep moving forward, then uh, we shrink and go away. I, and obviously the floor is open. We want you to be heard and to feel heard, but almost without exception, I don't think there's anyone up here that, is, that misunderstands the importance of the winery and the related entities, not the winery alone, but in a symbiotic sort of thing with all of the downtown businesses and, and what that brings to the vibrancy and the life in Cannon Falls, and not just to visitors, but also to people who live here. Yeah. Yeah. So. Thanks, Peter. I don't, I don't want to waste the council's time either if it's a redundant. Uh, so. right. yeah. The only thing but it is important. a it problem is, is, I know you'd rather see the EDA basically put it in one group, right? right? Which is fine, but they would negotiate what's going on, and you've been there. Um, but if we don't come to terms, then what? Well, if we don't come to terms, uh, the combination of the EDA and the council has to make a decision either they want right. us right. to stay or, or they want us to move. And it's, you know, I'm, I'm at the point where, but you know, I, I'm forced to make a decision. But you have to also negotiate with us too. Yeah, no, I, I, mean, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, and, I mean, and, and no one's established any, you know, Parameters that can't be, you know, adjusted. Okay, right. but so, uh, I mean, but but we are we are apart. But is, is there room to to make an agreement? Yes, but what I guess I'm looking to the council to say is I need a you know a very very warm and fuzzy, okay, because my next step right now is to go to the next step in plans. I've already spent a significant amount of money with, or put you know initial plans. Uh, I've hired you know. Uh, you know, a, a consultant, which has helped me with the economic development. She's done a great job, and she's her knight, Annie Deckert. And she's worked with the, the ADA and Ron and, and uh, <coughs> where is it, Dave, Dave Maroney. Uh, but the next step is to spend about 35, 40,000 bucks. And that's to do, you know, like civil engineering drawings, structural drawings to get firm bids. And our objective is to break ground on or about uh, April 15th. And it's just not a, a, a casual day that's tossed out there. It's going to take four, four and a half months with R.J. Ryan, and it, and it will be done in that period of time. It will be contractually uh, stipulated. And that will allow us then to get into the fall harvest. Okay, If we miss that window of opportunity, we're going to have a real real challenge having you know, a couple hundred tons of grapes come in and have a building going up at the same time with our current situation. So we're, we're trying to adjust and make the accommodations necessary. Couple questions. Yeah. Uh, what's the operation of the winery, the existing winery, during the, during the period of construction? I, I might have missed that in here. It's going to be operating full speed. Full, for full speed. Okay, just, awesome. just like it is right now, Cedar. Okay. Uh, I have an, I, I, an idea. Can I just say that? Yeah. Okay. So the valuation that you mentioned that the EDA had done on the 
other parcel that the EDA owns. Right. Is that just on that parcel? They didn't that's include right. we the have, right. parking lot entrance? That's okay. Not, that's not been included. It. And I for that portion of it, that we... rough we, figure we, that you mentioned, John, mm -hmm. that 100 and this, whatever. For that okay. portion of that, we if we were to make a determination on that, we would have to go to closed session tonight. So we No, I get it. Can. I get it. I'm not going to talk about money or the dollars, right. but couldn't we, as the council, sort of assign our interest in, for purposes of this, for, for purposes of having that land deal close without having to negotiate two separate things and us having to calibrate well based on the square footage that we're talking about and that there's no structures on it but no construction versus the other you know what I mean? we could right. just assign it and say right. eda handle all yeah. the property we could that's, that's kind of that's, that's what that's i'm talking right. about trying that's to what do he's talking about. I, I understand but okay. well you're saying combine it to, to one it whether that's the council or the eda was yet undetermined i'm saying we could assign the property to the to the eda but couldn't we keep and sort of put a pin in the tax until after other deals got handled, no, you would you would you would tie your price that you were willing to pay, obviously, to well, whether it, or not it, the abatement kind of was an, an overall package. Uh, okay, yeah. I said if, if we could I'm accomplish sorry, I'm abatement to the EDA. Well, the abatement has to go through us. That that has to come through us. Oh, okay, it has to. That portion of it has to come through okay. the council and be approved by the council. Okay. That's, that's also a council, and also uh, if I remember right, Robbie, we have to also send an application to the county to go to your county. Right. So that's kind of like a two-step <laughs> process. Got it. Right. I guess tonight uh, a great accomplishment would be to get the, the two parcels into one mm -hmm. so that it's clear for me then where I stand from a negotiation standpoint, it's clear then for the city, okay, between the EDA and the city itself, where they standpoint, come to quick resolution on that and then allow us to move to the, the next step as far as you know, tax abatement or utilities right. or whatever else. But it, it, that would give me a, a strong enough feeling then to say, okay, everyone's serious here and to start real drawings and really start to move this thing forward. Just well, a quick question for you is, is your expansion there, is that about the manufacturing end of it? Are you going to have more <coughs> convention centers or something like that? Or is there, and I think I know what your answer is going to be, is, is there some reason you can't just keep the winery and have the manufacturing someplace else? Uh, I, I'm sure it's more convenient or something, but... Uh, how does this building enter into it? Is it more about manufacturing or is it more about more people coming? Actually, it's, it's, it's all tied. Uh, the actual uh, facility that we're ad adding on is about 19,000, between 19 and 20,000 square feet. We're going to have 600 square feet of office space in there. Right now, we have uh, no offices, okay, currently in our facility. Uh, if you, I said if you stop by the winery, Kathleen is working in a, in a broom closet. And, and that is not a made-up number. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's four foot by six feet, okay? It wouldn't pass uh, probably health code. Uh, so we're going to have a half a dozen offices for people to actually be able to work out in a safe, clean environment. Uh, we're also going to carve out a nice patio, which is going to be right next to where the existing facility is right now, and it's an ext extend along Mill Street. So that will be around, again, around fifteen to 1,700 square feet of the total footprint. Uh, so so that the remaining portion of it is going to be manufacturing. Okay, that's where we're going to do the. We're going to take the current tanks. If you've been in our facility, all well, the current tanks and production facility, move it in there. We're going to expand our tasting room that we have right now. When I say expand, it's the same facility, same footprint. We're just going to fill in the space where the tanks currently are and add additional tables. And the plan is to put in you know, some additional uh, food items, which has been requested by the the city already to me. So the, the memo indicates that the purpose of this 19, approximately 19,000 square foot is to increase capacity, add a new filtration system, expand the tasting room, and add a brick-fired pizzeria, pizzeria with a goal of doubling production to 20, 240,000 bottles per year. New equipment, tanks, barrels, cooling system also will include 6,000 square feet of warehouse space, or at least you'll no longer have to rent that elsewhere. You'll use the new space for that purpose? Th that's correct. Right. So this information is presented in the writing. Yep. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. And, and the total project, uh, Cedars mm -hmm. and his staff, is, it's, it's going to be around $1.8 million. It could vary. It could push up to $2 million, but it's probably going to be between one seven and $2 million. So that gives you kind of one one eight was a kind of a real good target for right now. And your design will eliminate the problems we have with trucking and forklifts and yeah, that right. the reason that we really off your own so. property instead of off yep. the parking lot <coughs> and back. And that was going to be on our own property. It's actually going to be all enclosed, so it won't be an eyesore. I do have a fairly extensive manufacturing background, and 
to have it the way it is, is it's, it's pretty chaotic. And to have it all enclosed, it'll be uh, extremely clean. And uh, again, from a city standpoint, it's, it's again, safer, cleaner, better looking. I'm personally all for the winery. I've sat in on the EDA meetings. I've met with Ron a few times, and I'm all for it. I'd, I'd like to see, you know, us move on, make a you know, deal with the EDA, or if it means combining the two to make it work, I want to see it. I like to see it get going here. Well, I'd make a motion if I knew what motion to make. I think we're making a motion to yeah. com combine for purposes of negotiation for the two of parcels. For the, for the two parcels. So the and assign the EDA. Yeah. Pardon me? The EDA to do that? Yeah. Well, we com right. We combine them. We, pr we permit the EDA to negotiate the sale of it. And then come right. back to us again. No. Is that right? They would negotiate the sale, I mean, uh, of the two parcels totally. Is yeah, that, right. that part, so they would not come back to us for further the permissions. The EDA is autonomous as far as, like, the property correct. purchases. They, they can sell it. Yeah. And we don't have to come back and approve it. Yeah, correct? Right. right. Okay. But we could agree on a price if we so desired that we would accept that they uh, offer it in with their packet, I mean, with their piece of property. Oh, like a reserve amount. If it was a bid well, sort of thing. The piece, the piece in mind is 120 feet deep and about 30 feet, 35 foot wide, plus or minus in that, because it's not defined. I mean, there's nothing that can thing. really be done with it. It's uh, like I said, it's the you can't build on it. I mean, the entrance in and out of the parking lot. Parking lot. No, it's, it's, that's okay. all it's being used for. So I move. I'm taking the steam. I knew the motion. <laughs> I move that we uh, combine the part for purposes of negotiation, combine the parcels, and assign the authority to negotiate the sale of that combined parcel with the winery to the EDA. I think I said that all. I'm all second. All right. Okay. Got a motion by Cedar and a second by Mike to uh, combine the two parcels uh, for the sale of the property for the winery expansion to the EDA to, for negotiation purposes. I want to abstain, Raleigh. Like Robbie. Actually, the motion could on, would only need to be the one parcel because EDA already has control right, of the, right, the big right. parcel. So it's for the portion of parcel 52. Oh, right. right. 141. I want them to combine yeah. it and talk about yeah, one parcel. parcel in the sale, yeah. not right. to treat it like here's the one that we have and then here's the one that we have on behalf of the city. Right. Just it's one. Yeah. Okay. So parcel 52 Right. Um, which would be that's these that's the current EDA property right right so 41 five twenty one zero zero four one one zero the portion the 42 approximately 4200 square feet right. uh, that we allow the EDA to so. to uh, we'll combine it and, and have them take care of that right. any other discussion all those in favor aye, aye. aye. Opposed? <coughs> Motion passes. Okay. Uh, also, and then uh, what we'll do is uh, going forward, we'll uh, uh, work with the EDA to, to come up with a price and, and negotiate that part of it. And then uh, uh, at, with that also, we'll uh, uh, once we get to that point, then we'll start working on the abatement and everything else moving forward. and try to get this project going Bef thank you sir I'm sorry before we move off of it since there's some low-hanging fruit in the list of the things that the city could handle right. is there any <clears throat> sense since we're all here and it's all fresh in our mind could we tackle one quick like I would move that the city uh, complete and pay for applicable platting and other applicable land use applications contingent upon the project moving forward yep. just to get it out of the way yep. so that's yep. my motion second. Yeah, I got a motion and a second that uh, the city take care of any applicable platting and other applicable land use applications completed and paid for by the city area contingent upon project moving forward. Any further discussions? Mike, you seconded that, right? I did. Mm -hmm. yep. All those in favor? I don't, okay. I got a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion on that? That would be the third item down on page three there. Are the of the blue of circles. the blue of the blue circles right I'm in favor yeah. all those in favor aye. aye aye opposed 
Motion okay. passes. There, is there any reason we can't just do the other two? I don't want to. I don't, I'm not ready for the, the sidewalk. Yeah, yeah. There's I'd too big of a price tag on it. I want oh, to see a plan. Yeah, I mean, we we'll, we'll look at the. I mean, we'll we can work on getting that done. And I mean, I think uh, that's. No. Greg, I mean, you had done a, in the past. You had done a projection on that. I think it was like fifty thousand. Is what it and, came and up. Really, to. that's from my standpoint. You know, that's not a right. a hard because that's not really for me. It's right. I, I'll be oh, one okay. of the numerous people along Mill Street that will benefit by it. But mm -hmm. okay. Right. I think it's, it's good no. to okay. the city. More but I understand. Yeah. yeah. And we'll look at that portion of it. Uh, how about the replacement and abandonment and relocation costs of any utilities? I'm game for that. Okay. So I would make a motion that uh, the city complete and pay for applicable costs related to replacement, abandonment, or relocation of utilities. Okay. Motion by Cedar. Do I have a second? I'll second. Second by Morris. To, for the city to uh, pay for replacement, abandonment, and relocation costs of any applicable costs related to utilities completed and paid for by the city. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming tonight, Ron. Thanks for coming tonight, Ron. Thanks for your support. And yep. thank everyone for coming. Yep. It is a, it's a powerful show of support. Yep. Yep. Thanks, guys. Yep. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Have a good evening. All right, this time we're going to move on to item 8C, which is the first English, uh, first payment for the first English Mass parking. Hot in here. I need to go. Or first English, uh, where did it go here? First English church bank. Church yep. wash. Yep. Church washout. Yeah, the only quick question for Greg on that <laughs> is there some reason that uh, we went with the sod up on top instead of concrete? We thought it fit better with the surrounding areas and the turf. I mean, we can we can monitor in the spring how it goes, but that's what we went with was just the turf in front of the catch basin. We extended the berm like you talked earlier and put an overflow over the top. So I'm curious to see how it's going to perform, but it'll probably be a few months before we get rain now to, <laughs> to see if it works. What, uh, and then the other concern I had is the sump drain that's halfway down the hill um, with the large rock in there it's really hard to get to it. And I'm very concerned about that it, kids are gonna monkey around on that and somebody's gonna roll a rock and get hurt. So are we gonna fence around this or, or can we go to a inch and a half rock and put over the top of the big rock or at least make a walkway through that sump pit? Um, to me, I just, I, I think it's a safety issue. Well, the, uh it, it's an improvement from what was there. The work that was all done in the right of way, so it would be the city could fence it if you wanted to. We can talk with Tom of Public Works to see, you know, what's the frequency of them having to get to that catch basin to even clean it out, and do we put up a fence at the top on the end of the sidewalk? That would be up to the city. All the improvements we did are within the right of way the city has, so you could. No, I thought we were going to have a um, catch basin on the bottom. Because the way it looks right now, it's going to go into, oh, what's the name? I know. Holt. Holtz. Yeah. Lawn. The way it, you know, if we get it, it's just going to come in and go. No, there's a catch basin at the top, and that's what the berm, the berm kind of surrounds yeah. the backside of it. That There's a pipe then to a separate structure most of the way down right. that, at, that will um, slow the water down. The water will come over the top on a big event and down the riprap. There's a smaller pipe out the bottom to completely drain that structure between events. If for some reason the structure on top plugs, grass clippings, leaves, then it would build up and have to go around the berm, but by then it would go over the top where we have a reinforced overflow, if you will. So I would be very surprised if, if we ever got any water to the north. You got a reinforced overflow in there? We put a little, we put a a low point in the berm, if you will, so it, before it went too far in the middle north or south, mean? it would go over the top and down the rock. If okay. if that um, inlet were to plug on top, we got a casting on there that will take a lot of flow and, and prevent a lot of stuff to get through there and, and shouldn't plug. Okay. I saw these costs. Weren't we talking about FEMA taking care of this at one time, or what happened there? The way that it works is the city has to incur the expense, then we make the submission, and then FEMA, uh, well, actually the state reimburses us on behalf of FEMA. Okay. And so 
to Leroy's question as far as putting, you know, smaller, uh, you know, inch and a half or some other class uh, gravel on it, uh, that would be outside the parameters. So that would be our, our expense, 100%. We could make a request for FEMA, but I doubt they would grant it. Uh, it took a lot just to get this this um, improvement project done as opposed to just well, those work filling had, it and had to be done whether but right. FEMA would be a plus if it would happen. So a significant portion of this, if not mm -hmm. all of it, will be covered under the, the FEMA reimbursement, assuming we came in on budget. And you're asking us to approve a payment for work that's already been done. Right. 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 That I'll make a motion we approve. Second. Yeah. Motion by Mike, second by Ken to approve uh, application for payment number one for First English Church Bank Erosion Repair. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passes. Moves us on to item 8D, which is the recycling. And John, you had a question. I on just that. had a question. Preliminarily, they were talking about rate increases for the first five years, and they, they varied in price. And in the contract, it's set at uh, $3.26 per CDU. Is that a gr something you just agreed on, or how did that work? I, I didn't hear that one. Yeah, the, uh, Gibson Sanitation is keeping the rate the same as the existing rate. Is that rate the present rate? Years. Yeah. yeah. And it's been present for, what, almost 10 years? It's been at least eight same years, rate I think. Like. Okay, no problem. I think we got a good agreement with them, and I certainly like to support the local. Yep. Yeah, and I was man. concerned that reach out for us um, that we had to put it out on bids, and if we don't have to, you'll make me happy because I'd like Gibson to just yeah. keep going. Yeah, I feel the same I checked way. with City Attorney Knudsen, and he said no. Okay, thank you. Okay, make a motion. Motion. Make a motion. I'll second. Motion by Leroy. Second by Morris. To approve. The recycling contract. contract for Gibson. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carries. That moves us on to reports. Sam. Nothing. Tom? I have nothing. Chief? Well, we are in the middle of a uh, towards zero death wave. Uh, we are a participating agency with the uh, Goodhue County effort. Uh, that's a statewide effort. So right now the, the focus is on impaired drivers. So if you're going out for a Christmas party or enjoying yourself on a weekend, uh, bear that in mind. There is extra patrols out. Uh, plan ahead. Uh, have a designated driver. Walk. Take a cab. Uh, just stay off the, uh, off the roads. If you are uh, drinking, don't drive. So yeah. Yeah, I just want to take a minute and commend Tom and his uh, street crew. Uh, that, there's no way that could be an easy job last night when we got <laughs> rain followed by snow. Um, but I thought the roads were no were pretty drivable compared, uh, you know, to what they could have been. And and uh, I just want to say that I I enjoy seeing your staff out and about around town. There, uh, it's always fun to stop and kind of shoot the crap a little bit with them. And everybody seems to be. Uh, that's why they fill your driveway with snow. Though, no, they're, they're never on the clock. They're always on break. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> right. I didn't mean it that way at all. Sorry about that. Uh, You're going to get them all in trouble, Mike. <laughs> uh, I rescind that. Uh, but, no, it's, just, it's good to see the local guys out there, and uh, they look like they enjoy their job as much as, you know, somebody can when they're hanging Christmas wreaths in cold weather and stuff. <clears throat> I'll just be quiet the rest of the <laughs> Please. Cedar? Uh, yeah, I really want to thank um, staff and the department heads who we managed to do a lot. We met rising health care costs, which are, you know, endemic, right? Um, we were able to fairly compensate our employees. We were able to plan responsibly for um, infrastructure. And we did all that while thanks to some property valuation stuff rising. I get it wasn't totally heroic measures on our part, but we did some heroic measures. We didn't, the council didn't say yes to everything. Uh, we had to say no to some things that I think, you know, there, there, were, there was real need for it, but we had to prioritize, we had to make tough decisions. You guys found ways to cut and save. And 
I think we had a really great result. I'm pleased with how it worked. I don't think we'll be able to do that every year, right? Have a negative property tax thing, but we were able to do it this year while still accomplishing some important goals. And I think there's the biggest room in the world is the room for improvement. So, but this year we have we have plenty to be proud of as well. Thank you. I just have a couple comments. I I'd like to see we kind of let uh, Joe Wheeler and his group go ahead with the uh, sandstone. But let's don't leave out Chris's proposals too. I, you know, maybe something you can work together on because I don't want you. I, I like your idea of local, local merch and everything else. So I'd like to see some kind of uh, cooperation there, and I think it'll uh, work out. I'm hoping it's such a big job that there will be so much collaboration available. Yeah. Do you think? I, I hope think it's such so. a I huge hope. job. Uh, it's plenty of room I for anyone so. who wants to do some work. Yeah. And, cool. and then I have one other question maybe for Greg. What's going on at the library? Are they still having problems in there with the... Um, we hired a, a third party to do a forensic review of the leak that still is prevalent, and we're waiting for them to get their results back to us, and then we'll meet with the staff, with staff and discuss what they come up with and what remedies they might recommend. Uh, Leroy? Um, just one thing here, uh, with the winery thing here tonight, <clears throat> I couldn't help uh, but think about how everything becomes a partnership in our town. And I want to bring up the fact that uh, uh, we had a family 90-year-old birthday party out at the Occasion Center at the mall. Somebody has invested in this and made a great center out there for us mm -hmm. without any investment from the city. We also got the Northside Occasion Center here that somebody invested in. Um, we also have got uh, Thora May that moved downtown. We got Sue's um, garage sale things that are going on. We got the Grappa's Garage thing that uh, is going to totally be remodeled into a big uh, business center. And, and I just wanted to bring them things up because every little thing ties everything together and it's important. And the other thing that was so amazing this week, I had a call up at the, the old creamery on top of the hill and there's a gal that moved in the back up there on the third floor and she's doing art in a beads thing up there. So I'm just, I just want to thank everybody, I don't care if you're a garage sale person or what it is, for investing. And it's not just the winery brings people to town, it's all these as a group. Thank you. Ken? Well, I see we've survived our first brush with winter, and uh, hopefully uh, uh, we can stay away from the, the rain before it freezes. Uh, and uh, I guess I, I'm hoping that uh, uh, we can see a little more uh, partnership with, between SEMCRA and um, your group uh, and maybe we can get some more uh, housing that uh, is affordable for people because uh, we do have a big lack. Yeah. Uh, Tom, I really do like the way you guys plowed. It was basically right to the curb instead of this far out. And that was fantastic. <laughs> I've checked around town and you guys are, I know last year you had some new guys and all that, but you did, they did an excellent job. And uh, commenting on Leroy, also uh, Dr. Turner still planning on going through with the event center out there. And I think he wants to get it going by June, something like that. So, I mean, there's, there's a lot of things going on, and that's just a great thing. So that's all I got. And I just want to thank council, the staff, everybody for all the hard work. Uh, you know, it's, it's been a crazy year, but a lot of things going on in, in Cannon Falls. Uh, when you talk to the county, they say, what else is going on? I mean, because there's so many things going on, and we've seen um, more building and remodeling and anything and everything that, that hasn't happened in years. So. Uh, uh, you know, hopefully we can keep it moving and, and, and go into next year and uh, have the same success. So uh, thanks to everybody for all your hard work. It takes everybody working together, not just, uh, you know, uh, the city council. It takes our staff. It takes our citizens. It takes our businesses all working together to make 
make this a great place to live and raise our families. So thanks to everybody else. And uh, with that, uh, I have to take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.